conspiracy theories, the paranormal, UFOs, aliens, and all things strange and unusual. This is Black Lotus. Guess what? What? We're back. Yes, we are. <laughs> After a long hiatus, I think this is this is the first video I think we've done in almost five months. Yeah, I think you know, and uh, uh, the reason being is because <clears throat> I work in an essential business, and I don't want to drop all the research onto Ralph all the time, you know. And so I didn't, but I didn't really have time to do it. And uh, but <clears throat> yeah, so uh, things are calming down now a little bit, and so uh, we're back at it, right on. So. Uh, Anyway, uh, today we're going to be talking about Travis Walton, and if you don't know who Travis Walton is, uh, definitely stick around because you're going to want to hear this story. Uh, but uh, first, I want to make sure that everybody understands that we have a group over at Facebook, and uh, I'd like you to go take a look at it. If you uh, enjoy what we do here, uh, you definitely want to check out this group. It's a great group of people. We don't have trolls, and uh, they're... Uh, it's, it's, it's just, you know, when we talk about all things strange and unusual there. We've got a lot of experts in the fields, yep, too. Absolutely. And uh, also don't forget to like and subscribe to our <laughs> videos. We like to see those thumbs up. And don't forget, after you do subscribe, to hit that bell because that way you get notified every time uh, we do uh, upload, a video. upload another video. Um, also want to mention that we have a podcast over at uh, Pod, uh, Podbean, and it's called Paranormal News Network, and there we do a little things a little differently than we do here at Black Lotus. Uh, what we do is we report the latest in uh, interesting paranormal news. <clears throat> Excuse me, and uh, we also have uh, interviews with some fascinating people, so most definitely check that out. Um, anyway, let's get on to this <clears throat> thing with uh, Travis Walton. So. Uh, if you don't know who he is, um, he was the uh, he, he was the subject of a very famous uh, uh, UFO abduction uh, back in 1975. It was back in November uh, of 1975, and uh, <clears throat> he he was he was a uh, lumberer, yep. and uh, he was working in the uh, I got to get this right Apache Sitgreaves National Forest, and I guess that's near Snowflake, Arizona. Um, and so his story go, well, I'll get into the story in a minute, but, uh, um, apparently he, uh, and, uh, so, what, how many words are like six? It was six and, and him. Six, six, and so seven people all together. And they all witnessed this thing. And, uh, but they were coming home from work and they spotted this, uh, silvery disc in the, uh, uh, forest. And Travis was the one who got abducted. And, uh, but anyway, uh, but then he wrote about, when he came back, he, he, he had, he had no idea what had happened, I guess. And, but he eventually remembered and he, he wrote a book about it and it was called, um, and that, this was in 1978. It was called the Walton experience. Uh, and that was later adapted to a 1993 film by Paramount and it was retitled fire in the sky. Um, and I gotta say, whether you believe his story or not, this is probably one of the best uh, abduction movies I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. You know, but uh, anyway, let's take a look at this, man. Tell me about Travis Walton. About what happened? about Travis. Start by telling me who he is. He's, uh, he was my best friend. Stop right 
took it. You expect me to believe that a flying saucer came down and took your friend away to outer space? That boy's out here. I want to find him. Where's my brother, Mike? What you guys do with him? This town's going nuts. Everything's crazy. There are those of us out there who know the truth. Yeah, so anyway, so apparently the film uh, makers, I mean, he was one of the writers of the, right. for, for the thing, but even still, the, the, the producers were like, well, you know, his story is kind of mundane and typical, so they jazzed it up a lot. And so it's not the exact experience he had described. But anyway, so his story goes that while riding in a truck uh, with uh, his uh, six other co-workers, they, like I said, they saw this uh, saucer shape. Uh, object over the ground it was approximately 100 feet 110 feet away and it was making like a high-pitched buzz right and uh walton claims that after he left the truck and approached the object a beam of light suddenly hit him and knocked him unconscious yeah threw him 10 feet yeah yeah so and so then so he was abducted through that and these other six co-workers saw this happen and they got frightened and they all drove away well they thought he got gotten incinerated or something by this wow. beam. yeah yeah because he just he got hit by this beam and then he disappeared right so yeah anyway so he claimed that he awoke in like a hospital like room and he was being examined by these uh what he called short bald creatures now i can only assume they were grays. small grays right yeah so um but he claimed that he he claimed that he fought with them and uh, then he was led to another room by uh, some guy, some human guy. Right, a human guy showed up. He was trying to find a, a way out uh, of there. And a human uh, showed up and led him down a hallway into another room where there was a couple of more humans. Mm -hmm. And uh, they actually put a face mask over him or some type of ventilation mask over him that had a round black object at the end of it, but it wasn't attached to any hoses. But before he could even push himself away from the mask, away from him, he passed out cold. And that's mm -hmm. the last thing he remembered. Right, and I guess the next thing he knew, he was uh, walking along a highway, you know, and uh, but this was like five days later. Right. You know, and in that, in the meantime, his six coworkers, even though they reported this and they all reported it, uh, the same story, they were under an investigation for murder. Right, because they know? couldn't find him. Yeah, and you know, and they they had a manhunt out for this guy. Um, but here's my problem with this, is that I don't believe it. I don't believe the story. I think it was contrived um, to make money. I think he did it with the intent of writing this book. I really do. And then on top of that, I guess in the days following uh, the claim, the National Enquirer awarded Walton and his uh, six co-workers five, a $5,000 prize for uh, best UFO case of the year. Right. Now, they didn't know that was going to happen, <clears throat> but no. still, I mean, I think he did it with the intent of writing this book. But what, what, what do you say about the, uh, they all had um, polygraph tests. Yeah. And, and they all passed, except uh, one of them passed, uh, was in, inconclusive. Yeah. Um, there's a UFO researcher out there by the name of Philip uh, J. Class, and he considered he considered Walton's story to be a hoax uh, uh, for financial gain, and discovered apparently he discovered many discrepancies uh, in the uh, the accounts with uh, be, between Walton and, and his coworkers. Okay. Uh, I guess after investigating the the case, Class reported that the polygraph tests were poorly administered. Um, and then Wal uh, that uh, and that uh, Walton used uh, polygraph countermeasures such as like holding his breath, and that uh, class uncovered an earlier failed test administered by the examiner who conducted the case uh, involved gross deception. Quote. Um, but uh, but yeah. So another thing here is is that I guess the. Um, uh, 
Where am I at here? I guess uh, Walton and his older brother and his mother were described by the Navajo County, Arizona Sheriff as, quote, longtime students of UFOs. Okay. You know, I mean, so I, yeah, I, I, I tend to not believe this guy. And it's not as though I don't believe in abduction. Folks, you know, I've been abducted. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't doubt abductees very often. You just doubt this particular but one. But I doubt this particular one. I really do. They said that also there was a movie about uh, UFO abductions on the on TV like two weeks prior to this happening. Yeah. And some of the uh, cir circumstances were quite similar. But, you know, if you think about uh, alien abductions, they're all pretty similar. You know, I mean, and True. so... You know, and what bothers me is that they were saying that because he watched this movie, he was influenced. And, you know, one person was saying, you know, stories of, of, of abduction um, have only, you know, kind of recently come out ever since, you know, the, the reports of UFOs have been uh, rampant since like the right. 40s and 50s. Um, I tend to disagree with that. I think that UFO <clears throat> abduction cases have been happening since shit way back to, you know, to, to the 1700s, you know, I mean, and a lot of them just went unreported, but some of them were reported, you know, so I don't think that that's true. I really don't. Um, <clears throat> but uh, he uh, occasionally appears at UFO conferences. Yeah, and so makes money that way. Yeah, so he makes money that way. He's he got wrote his, two he's books. Got, he's got his own UFO convention as well that he does annually, and it just makes me wonder when he shows up to these conferences because I know there's a lot of people in the UFO community that who don't believe him, right? And I wonder if he's confronted by these people a lot, and maybe that's why he created his own uh, convention. Possibly. Um... I'm up in the air whether to believe it or not, to be honest. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, there's there's enough things that lead to me to say, yeah, possibly it could have happened, but there's a lot of, like you said, discrepancies. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I guess he appeared on a Fox game show, um, and uh, it was called The Moment of Truth. Right. And, it was, and so he, he was uh, hooked up to a polygraph, and when he was asked... Uh, if he was abducted on November 5th, 1975, he replied, yes. And yeah. the polygraph tech yeah. determined he was lying. But, I mean, you can't always rely on polygraph tests. That's why they're not admissible in court. Right. You know? But, I mean, it's it's a good basis for, you know. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. I, 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 don't, I don't tend to believe this. Again, it's not as though I don't believe in abduction because I've been abducted and, 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 and I, I know many other abductees and I believe their stories, but I just don't believe this guy. You know, so good movie, though. Good movie. <laughs> anyway, folks, we're going to get out of here. Thanks a lot for watching. And again, we're back. We're going to be doing this every, I think, Friday, Saturday. Somewhere right. in there. Yeah, somewhere in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, again, make sure that you like and you subscribe and you hit that bell so that when we upload, when we do upload again, you'll be notified. So, right. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching and we will catch you next time. Don't forget to keep thinking and question everything.